Hello. I'm going to bring this video to you um, from Professor Kenneth Miller. I mentioned him in my previous video I did recently with regards to his religion evolving. And um, again, I get some of the wacky com uh, conversations going on from creationists that um, think that things are too um, irrespectively complex to uh, just happen by chance. And evolution does not happen by chance, it happens by non-random selection, as, as has our uh, immune system, as has our blood clotting system, and that's what it is. I mean, you get, um, uh, you get, uh, he, he, uh, I think he's a biochemist, um, Professor Behe, um, please quote me on that, if, if, you know, and, and let me know if he isn't a biochemist, I'm, I think that's what he is. Um, but, uh, uh, he, he completely uh, publish. He completely ignores the facts that uh, evolution is a fact, and is too anything too complex that he thinks is oh you, you know you can't explain blood clotting because you need seven levers in place to have that system to work. Those enzymes need that you know everything in place so it help to clot the blood. Um, but uh, you know I mean um, cellular biologists and like Professor Kenneth Miller etc. had put forward a case explaining how this works very well and the alpha-1 angiotypsin how that works and how that builds up over time and how that evolved through natural selection um, they put forward those notions uh, and sent them to, they sent, they sent, them doc, they sent Professor Behe documents um, explaining this very well and in great detail and um, obviously Professor Behe is a supporter of intelligent design thinks things like bacteria and flagellum and the human blood clotting system is too too complex to just evolve or just happen. So it went, anyway, it, it, it went to court a while ago, and um, and obviously a judge has to be has to remain on the fence and look at all the evidence he has at hand. And um, when uh, Professor B he was in the dock, um, some uh, biologists were like saying uh, when when the lawyers were quizzing Professor B he on on, on on evidence that he's got at his hand and why has he ignored uh, requests from other scientists and different fields to come along and present, uh, present his um, why evolution is wrong and why Charles Darwin's black box fails. Um, unfortunately, well, Professor B, he didn't turn up in many of these occasions anyway. Um, so these um, biologists sent um, well-documented uh, um, information, um, literature, on evolution, um, on bacteria phylogenum and um, human blood clotting system, and how, look, how, look, how we look at other vertebrates, and how you know we are very similar, and how we, we when you go back back down, it gets less complex. You get down towards fish, they only need more enzymes. They need whole blood clotting systems. They don't need seven levers; they just need the one. And then you got to reptiles; they only need a couple, and then and so on, and it builds up over time. And because you need like a jigsaw, and you want bit in place, no bit will be in place. Different enzymes will come in place, and then before you know it, over a long time, evolution drives natural selection. And here we have a blood clotting system that helps us. But don't forget, there's hemophiliacs that have lost its enzymes, by the way, and they need a lot of um, blood donors and, and, and they have to take a lot of uh, blood intakes to, to stay healthy. Um, obviously, their immune system is going to be pretty crap. Um, because of this deficiency, um, but that's uh, another story, another time. Um, but if yeah, I mean, you, if you, if you want to look up this uh, this challenge, um, and from Professor Beaky he went to uh, went to court and he's sitting in the dock. The biologist says, "Okay, we sent you this. What do you think?" And Professor Beaky scratched his head and said, "I haven't actually read that one." Okay then, this one. No, I haven't read that one. And out of this 56 um, well presented uh, literature on evolution, Professor Behe said he's all read one of them, but he didn't really take it in, and still in his humble opinion, evolution is wrong. The judge just looked at him and said, You're a fucking idiot. You've been presented with all this data. You're here to challenge the theory of evolution, and all you're doing is making yourself look like a fool. I, for one, would not put myself forward and stand up in court and swear on the Holy Bible or whatever and say I am telling the truth 
but it's my only hu my uh, humble opinion, which means it's a it's only just how I think, and it's not really supported. Um, but anyway, the video I'm going to play to you now, Professor Kenneth Miller, explaining these uh, these two functions: bacteria for genome and human blood clotting system. Thanks for watching. Lots. Third thing that was abundantly clear at the trial: these great icons of intelligent design, the things that are supposedly unevolvable, they've fallen apart. Example: specifically taken apart at the trial, the notion that the bacterial flagellum couldn't have been produced by evolution, or the blood clotting cascade, or the generation of biological information. I don't have time to talk about all three, but I'm going to show you two of them. Um, the notion that these complicated biochemical structures couldn't have been produced by evolution has been championed by Michael B. And B has an idea that he calls irreducible complexity. And he says, you can't evolve these things because they're irreducibly complex. Notice what he says. An irreducibly complex system can't be produced the way that evolution works by numerous successive slight modifications of a precursor system because any precursor to an irreducibly complex system that is missing a part is by definition non-functional. These are multi-part systems. And he's basically telling you that the 30 or 40 proteins that are in here, they all have to be together or there's no function. And since natural selection does have to work gradually, I agree on that point, um, it can't produce 20, 25, 26 proteins knowing what will eventually happen because natural selection is blind, which is indeed absolutely true. So the poster child for intelligent design by any standard, it shows up so often, it really could be called the poster child, is in fact the bacterial flagellum. This was mentioned so often in the trial that the judge, uh, probably from fatigue, got a little sarcastic about it. One of the attorneys said, Your Honor, when we reconvene, we're going to talk again about the bacterial flagellum. And the judge at one point said, Oh, goody. Um, <laughs> um, so what, what is this argument about? Here, here's the argument in very simplified form. Um, if you have a complex, multi-part biochemical machine composed of many parts, its function, everyone agrees, can be favored by natural selection. But the argument is that evolution can't produce them because the individual parts have no function of their own. That's what irreducible complexity means. So natural selection can't make this, doesn't have any function. Can't make that, can't make that. Um, therefore, you can't evolve a structure like this. Now, how does evolution explain something like that? Well, ever since Darwin, we've had a very good explanation. Um, and that is these complicated machines, they don't arise from scratch. They arise from combinations of components that have different functions, functions of their own. And the components originate with functions of their own as well. Therefore, natural selection will work every step of the way. Now, that's not evidence. That's just an argument. But the beauty of this is we can now hold these two ideas up against each other. And we can say, who's right? If irreducible complexity is right, then the parts of these machines should be absolutely useless. But if evolution is right, we should be able to take these machines, look at their parts, and discover, wow, they do other jobs. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the bacterial flagellum. So if we start with the flagellum, here it is. And these drawings name the genes and the proteins in the flagellum. And we say, let's take away a whole bunch of the parts. How many? Um, not one. Not five, not ten. Let's take 40 of its 50 parts away. Now watch very carefully, because I'm going to do that experiment right there. There it goes. The parts are all gone, and I have left ten parts that span the membrane. What are left behind are ten proteins in the base of the flagellum. Now, if irreducible complexity is right, this should be absolutely functionless. It should have no function. But if you'll pardon the double negative, what is left behind is not non-functional. What is left behind is the type three secretory system, and it is fully functional. I know most of you in the room are going, of course, the type three secretory system. <laughs> the type three secretory system is a molecular syringe in which some of the nastiest protein uh, 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 bacteria on this planet produce toxic proteins, grab onto one of our cells, and inject those proteins into our cells. The bacterium that causes bubonic plague works this way. It's really nasty stuff. Well, guess what? The 10 proteins that make up the type 3 secretory system are directly homologous to the 10 proteins in the base of the bacterial flagellum. They don't produce movement. They're not a flagellum. But are they functional? They are fully functional. So remember that claim. Any precursor to an irreducibly complex system that is missing a part is by definition non-functional. This guy is missing 40 parts, 
and it is perfectly functional. What that means, there's no other word for it, is that that statement is wrong. Now that's not an incidental statement. That is the heart and soul of the intelligent design argument. And in this case, it turns out to be wrong. Now it's even wronger than that, because it turns out that not only do these proteins make up the type 3 secretory apparatus, but almost every protein in the bacterial flagellum is strongly homologous to proteins that have other functions elsewhere in the cell. And what that means is when we look at this wonderful icon of intelligent design, a careful analysis of the flagellum actually matches evolutionary theory, namely the parts should have functions of their own and not the intelligent design prediction. And that's simply a fact.